Boy, I really don't want to split the episode into two parts, but there's just so much to the story, I'm sure my subscribers wonder, what the? Mark, don't do it. Just look at what happens if you do. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. What do I do? What do I... Wait a minute. This is for the history of Walt's frozen head from 2022? Wait, do I really get that desperate for views? Whoops, wrong timeline. Wait, what about my World Showcase episode? Oh, it actually turned out to be a good thing. I mean, with all the abandoned attractions and pavilions from both the 1978 version and later expansions, everyone totally understood not wanting to shortchange the additional stories. Well, almost everyone. Our last our world. Okay, so just for a quick refresher, in the previous episode, we took a deep dive into the inspiration for Epcot's original World Showcase, and how it evolved from a standalone destination to a part of Epcot Center. We then covered every single one of the initially planned countries for the World Showcase, what they would have looked like, and the attractions within. We now continue the story of Epcot's abandoned World Showcase, beginning with what killed the vast majority of these pavilions, a lack of sponsorship. Epcot will be the window on the world of tomorrow, through which people will not only be able to see the future, but they'll be able to touch it. It will be the gathering place of nations where the cultures of the world will be shared. You see, Disney really struggled to get many of the planned countries, or the corporations representing them, to sign on as official sponsors. Part of the issue was convincing them how spending millions of dollars sponsoring a pavilion would benefit them directly. Also keep in mind that many in the industry were still skeptical about whether Epcot would be a success, period. So with Disney also requiring sponsors to sign on for 10 years or more, the vast majority were hesitant to invest so heavily in the World Showcase. 800 million? 800 million dollars? By the time Epcot was ready for construction in 1979, between the park's massive budget and a serious lack of sponsors, major changes were made to the initial vision of the World Showcase. One of them was making the American Adventure an official country of the World Showcase, instead of the so-called bridge from Future World into the World Showcase. Now it was to be used to lure visitors through the other countries to the back of the World Showcase. But not only would it replace the once magnificent water fountain, but it would take up the space of two entire pavilions, reducing the World Showcase from 20 eventual countries to 19. Another change was putting Holland, Poland, Brazil, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, United Arab Nations, Costa Rica, and the Philippines Pavilion on indefinite hold, as negotiations had either fell through completely or were far from finalized. The rest were separated into two different categories, those to be open and operational by the grand opening of the park, and those to be a part of the infamous Epcot Center Phase II construction. However, Switzerland and Africa fell somewhere in between. You see, the Switzerland Pavilion was initially intended for opening day, which was originally to include Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. However, of those three, only Denmark found official sponsorship, so it was revised into a much, much smaller Day 1 pavilion, with plenty of space for Norway and Sweden as part of Phase 2. Equatorial Africa was also kept on the master plan right up until construction. However, squabbling from African nations over which country would have a larger presence and a lack of proper funding put most of the pavilion on hold. Instead, the plan was to feature just enough on opening day to tease visitors, such as a themed construction fence, partial rockwork, a cultural center, and the safari walkthrough, but this was eventually cancelled as well. And that finally brings us to the construction of Epcot Center, as well as the beginning of the Phase 2 World Showcase Nightmare. Here's the spaceship Earth, where we'll board a time machine and journey through thousands of years of history into tomorrow. And right over there, Communicor, the center of it all. New Horizons, 21st century living, journey into imagination, the land, the universe of energy, the world of motion, and this will be the World Showcase community of nations brought together by the American Adventure. And that's only the beginning. There are over 27,000 acres to play with. 
Now keep in mind, the pavilions for Germany, Japan, and Italy were to still have opening day attractions. The only ride that was supposed to be a part of Phase 2 was Mexico's elaborate dark ride, which was now called El River del Tiempo. But then, financial issues began to surface. Unfortunately, midway through construction, Disney had already spent Epcot's entire $800 million budget. $800 million? The new budget was in the ballpark of $1 to $1.5 billion, but to keep costs from ballooning even further, priorities were shifted in both Future World and the World Showcase. The first World Showcase victim was Germany's Rhine River Cruise, as despite the fact that the show building was already partially built, the attraction was postponed for Phase 2. Another victim was Italy's Dark Ride and Roman Ruins walkthrough, as while the building for the queue entrance slash restaurant was also partially constructed, the rest was also delayed for Phase 2. Thankfully, Japan's Meet the World Show building was constructed to completion and on track for a day one grand opening. That is, until it came to install the Carousel Theater, as somehow the dimensions of the show building structure were built, well, wrong and couldn't be installed properly. The problem was so severe that the entire second floor would have had to have been torn down and built all over again. However, since the park's overall budget and sponsorship funds were already stretched thin, Meet the World was yet another attraction postponed for Phase 2. Finally, there was the aforementioned Scandinavia, but now reduced to Denmark Pavilion. As while even by 1981 was still planned for a day one attraction in at least some form, this was also abandoned and delayed for Phase 2. But it seems the decision was made after the Danish-themed restrooms were built. The final victim was the also scaled down Africa Pavilion, which was simply reduced into a vaguely themed refreshment center. But with all the additions to the World Showcase's Phase 2 expansion, executives realized they now had a major problem. The World Showcase had zero rides for opening day. So the once incredibly elaborate Mexico boat ride was taken out of Phase 2 and fast-tracked as a day one attraction. Unfortunately, this resulted in the removal of animatronics, four separate show scenes, and a drastic reduction in overall scale. Welcome to Equatorial Africa. Well, thank you very much. Uh, am I too early? About a year, but it's always nice to see you. When Epcot Center finally opened in October of 1982, Disney made no attempts to hide the fact that much of the park wasn't finished or had been put on hold. In fact, visitors could even find a souvenir book highlighting many of the upcoming attractions and pavilions. Officially, the countries of Africa, Israel, Morocco, and the recent addition of Spain were promoted as coming soon as part of Phase 2. As a sign of confidence, literal signs could be found around the World Showcase where visitors could eventually visit these countries. But strangely, others such as Venezuela, Switzerland, or at the very least Denmark, which were still in development, were nowhere to be found within the park, unless you count those confusingly out-of-place restrooms. As far as the attractions for Phase 2, Japan's Meet the World was listed as a 1983 grand opening, with Germany's as simply coming soon and only a tease for Italy. If you visited these pavilions on opening day, you'd find that Japan's show building and first floor was initially blocked off. As unknown to visitors, this was initially going to be a pre-show slash exhibit for Meet the World, but with the delay of the attraction, it was in the process of being transformed into a gift shop. Over at Germany, the entrance for the coming soon Rhine River Cruise was also blocked off with what appeared to be large wooden beams. For a time, it even appears that some sort of tease or display was on display near the entrance, a mystery I've yet to find an answer to in all of my years of researching. Italy was probably the least obviously unfinished, although it didn't take someone with a degree in architecture to see that something was missing. There was also the brick wall at the end of the pavilion and along the edges, which was pretty telling that more was on the way. In the meantime, the building that was to be part of a much larger complex was used as a marketplace of sorts. Oh, and if you want a fantastic view of the expansion minus the attraction show buildings, here you go. I may have forgotten to put that in part one. But now let's fast forward a few years. And now the flag of Norway will be planted, officially claiming this site for the Norway Pavilion. After Morocco arrived to the World Showcase in 1984, the next was Norway four years later, which had replaced Denmark and was now the gateway into Scandinavia. As far as the others such as Israel, Spain, Venezuela, and Africa, they would arrive never. Ultimately, these were completely abandoned within a few years of the park's opening due to a combination of further budget constraints, political issues, or sponsors pulling out of negotiations. 
As far as the Germany boat ride, this would also arrive never, and the queue entrance was eventually replaced with a large mural, although the partially built show building was eventually used, but for rehearsal and storage space. However, the fully constructed but improperly built Meet the World in Japan would arrive, oh, never. Though technically visitors could see the attraction at Tokyo Disneyland, but the Epcot version was abandoned entirely. But how about the Phase 2 Dark Ride and Roman Ruins walkthrough for Italy, or the Africa Pavilion, or the other in development countries, I hear you asking? Nope, those were ultimately abandoned as well. Though it is worth mentioning that many of the ideas and concepts for Equatorial Africa would go on to serve as a major influence for Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park. But the story of Epcot's abandoned World Showcase pavilions, expansions, and attractions is far from over. One of my favorite Kittleson uh, paintings is this one um, of the uh, Nuken. Around the same time work was proceeding on the Norway Pavilion and Maelstrom, the World Showcase's attraction-less UK pavilion was to receive its very own dark ride, the Thames River Cruise. As the name implies, this was to be inspired by the actual river cruises of the Thames River in London. The ride would have featured iconic landmarks and historical locations along the Thames River, such as Buckingham Palace, Big Ben, London Bridge, and many others. This would have also finally realized some of the ideas for Disneyland's abandoned international land from the 1950s. However, while extensive pre-production was done on the Thames River Cruise, ultimately this became yet another abandoned attraction of the World Showcase. But have no fear, because Disney had plenty of other pavilions and attractions in development. We are going to be dropping in on Imagineering a lot more in the future. There's just so much happening here that it's impossible to cover it all at once. Presumably to make up for Meet the World's cancellation, and the serious lack of rides within the World Showcase in general, towards the end of the 1980s, the Japan Pavilion was to receive a brand new attraction, a mountain-based roller coaster based off the real-life Mount Fuji. Similar to the Matterhorn, the ride would have had visitors sliding down the mountain in toboggan-like ride vehicles. Interestingly, in a curious bit of Imagineering, Mount Fuji would have utilized the abandoned Meet the World second floor show building as a queue or entrance into the attraction. Very little is known about the coaster specifics, other than, and I'm not making this up, a Godzilla-like creature attacking visitors as they slid down the mountain. Although, speaking of a Godzilla light creature, it's worth mentioning that there was an alternate version involving the actual Godzilla. You see, while developing Disney's MGM Studios, in addition to the great movie ride and the studio tour, another attraction was being developed, which was basically a spoof of the Academy Awards involving movie monsters. The host would have been an animatronic Eddie Murphy, as Eddie Franken-Murphy, who would have presented awards for categories such as Best Alien Invader. Again, I am not making this up. However, the true star of the evening was to be Godzilla, who would have made his way over from Epcot to accept a Lifetime Achievement Award. This would have taken advantage of the rights to use Godzilla within both parks, as an alternative to Mount Fuji was an attraction where visitors attempt to escape Japan aboard a bullet train as they're terrorized by the monster. Of course, this was basically just an updated version of the unbuilt motion simulator for the original World Showcase. Regardless, at the same time the Matterhorn-like Mount Fuji was being developed, Disney was also planning to bring the actual Matterhorn to the World Showcase, and finally realize one of its original abandoned countries, Switzerland. Epcot Center's World Showcase will soon welcome two new countries, the one most requested, the Soviet Union, and Switzerland, with its thrilling Matterhorn Mountain bobsled ride. You see, when developing the Matterhorn for Disneyland, the original idea was to include a Swiss village at the base of the mountain. Ultimately, for logistical and budgetary reasons, this was scrapped in favor of just the mountain itself. But when developing the Switzerland Pavilion, the idea was given life again and would have been one of the showcase's largest pavilions. As initially envisioned, the proposed location was in between Germany and Italy. Within the Swiss village was to be a nice and cozy restaurant, capable of seating over 200 visitors with a fantastic view of the mountain range. On the other side of the village were a number of merchandise shops, offering the usual assortment of country-based souvenirs, treats, a clothing store, and even a woodcrafting shop. As far as the Matterhorn attraction itself, as taken from the original storyboards, at the base of the mountain you'd enter a remote Swiss village. Here you, the visitor, stumble upon a cabin with a secret entrance into the mountainside. This leads to an ice cavern with, and I'm quoting this directly from the proposal, 
super-chilled water fountains to quench guests' thirst. As you continue, you pass by bobsleds and various mountain climbing equipment as you make your way up an avalanche-protected walkway. A short time later, you find the entrance into a secret command center filled with high-tech gadgetry and eventually make your way to a loading platform to take part in a bobsled competition. You enter your vehicle side by side with the competing bobsled team and prepare for launch. After a lift hill, it seems as if you would have randomly taken one of two paths and at first get to enjoy the beautiful and panoramic views of distant mountains and glaciers. You then approach another lift hill and pass by Again, I am quoting the ride description. A paramedic who's trying to open a door to his cabin while his rescue dog is inside and wags his tail. You then approach another lift hill, which functions as a high-tech starting gate for the competition. On the way down, an avalanche checker, their words not mine, pulls herself out of the way as you zip by and notice she's wearing shorts and sub-zero temperatures. My words not theirs. Suddenly, you approach an overturned sled, which unfortunately leads you completely off course and down into a dark crevice with sparks and scraping noises. You then pass by stalactites and stalagmites as you venture deeper and deeper into the mountain, eventually soaring past ice crystals which provide a colorful light show. Then, in the true Disney fashion, it seems as if you're about to collide with the other vehicles, so you veer off to the right, or left if you're on the other side, at the very last moment. The finale of the adventure features a deafening avalanche via projection effects, huge translucent ice cubes and glaciers, and another near collision with the other riders. After exiting through an underground waterfall, you arrive back to Civilization, where cast members pull a Universal Studios and clap as it's revealed that you beat the previous race time. As you exit the attraction, you're treated to a beautiful view of a mountainside lake, which of course leads to a gift shop. Evidently, there was also a far less elaborate and cheaper version designed, but this one was completely in the dark and relied on projection and lighting effects, so basically it was a hybrid of Adventure Through Inner Space and Space Mountain. However, the World Showcase had one more addition in the works, as alongside Mount Fuji and the Switzerland Pavilion, Disney was hard at work on yet another country. Russia. Over at Epcot Center, the Imagineers are hard at work on a space pavilion for Future World and a new Russia pavilion for World Showcase. Set to reside on the west side of the Germany pavilion, pre-production on this much-needed World Showcase expansion was pretty extensive. From the replication of the country's beautiful architecture and iconic landmarks to an elaborate theater show, this would combine stunning animatronics, projections, and advanced lighting effects, telling the story of Russia's origins and historical achievements. A cast of audio animatronic figures and a sweeping musical score will bring to life the songs, the triumphs, and the passion of the people of Russia. There was also to be yet another boat ride, but this one based on the Russian folktale Ivan and the Magic Pike, where visitors took a journey through the enchanted and colorful world of Slavic fairy tales and was to be nothing short of mesmerizing. The pavilion was also to feature the usual assortment of heavily themed restaurants, shops, and street performances. But as I'm sure you know where the story is going, ultimately the Russia Pavilion, the Switzerland Pavilion, and even Mount Fuji were completely abandoned. However, the 90s saw another attempt at utilizing one of the other vacant World Showcase properties with the Enchanted Forest. This was to be an expansion of the UK Pavilion, consisting of various walkthroughs and meet and greets based off Winnie the Pooh, Alice in Wonderland, Robin Hood, and Mary Poppins. Unfortunately, for unknown reasons, this was ultimately abandoned as well. At Epcot, the World Showcase of 11 different nations has always been a big favorite. For the Millennium Celebration, the showcase has been expanded by more than 25 countries in a popular new attraction called Millennium Village. The year 2000 finally saw the first real addition to the World Showcase in over a decade. Kind of, as the pavilion space for the Enchanted Forest was utilized for the short-lived Millennium Village. In 2010, the Italy Pavilion finally saw its Phase 2 expansion, mm, sort of, as the restaurant Via Napoli took the place of the originally intended walkthrough and dark ride. However, 2016 finally saw an expansion of the World Showcase as originally intended. Okay, not really. It was a frozen meet and greet in one of the other vacant spots, which is ironically right next door to the original Denmark restrooms. 
Today the World Showcase features just nine countries, eight if you don't count the American Adventure, which is pretty crazy considering the original plan was for 20 countries, which of course was already scaled down from the initial envisioned 30, and currently there's only three mostly vacant properties left for any additional countries. That being said, and I realize this will totally date the episode, with upcoming attractions like Ratatouille, the rumored Brazil Pavilion, and even the Mary Poppins ride, it seems like the World Showcase may finally live up to its true potential.